All right, so this is kind of a picture of our universe through time. In the beginning, we had this singularity, not totally unlike the middle of the black hole, but we called it the Big Bang. That's when the universe was infinitely dense and infinitely hot. And it's possible that was where our universe came to be, and that there was nothing before it. Where did it come from? You can't, you can't ask that question. And if there was nothing before it, then technically... When I say there's nothing before it, I said it includes time. Time itself came into existence in the Big Bang. So from there, rapidly the universe acce accelerated in expansion, grew super, super fast in a process called inflation. A few hundred thousand years passed, and this radiation was produced. It's known as the cosmic microwave background. We studied that in detail. It's all around us. If you turn on your television, that static, about 1% of the static you get, not if you're cable, if you're a fashion like me. You turn on channel one where there's no channel, and you see static, about 1% of that static was produced at that point from the Big Bang. <coughs> so time passes. 400 million years after the Big Bang, the first stars are forming, galaxies, planets, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Boring, 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 now we're here. You believe it or not, everything interesting happened in the first three minutes. So let's look at that, look at that early part of the Big Bang even closer. So this is at a measly 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the all in that little, little, tiny fraction of it. Okay. It's hard to imagine a time that small. So that's when this inflation happened, when the universe got instantly, dramatically bigger. Um, so let's see, I'll read this. I haven't read this slide until now. It expands from the size of an atom to that of a grapefruit in a tiny fraction of a second. So it becomes actually, like, really, I mean, it's hard to imagine how big that is and how quick. Think of that with uh, particles and that is all types of particles existed. Everything happened. Everything. It was so hot that everything Things that didn't exist now probably existed. Absolutely. At 10 to the minus 32 seconds, which it might seem like a long time later, but it's still in that very first instant, the universe was 10 to the 27 degrees Kelvin or Celsius. Um, and it, all of the types of matter that can possibly exist. It's, it's so hot that it's like you're inside of a particle accelerator. So the, we build accelerators to build new, to create new kinds of matter. The whole universe was a particle accelerator in that time. And then it cools, and it, you're at a, a millionth of a second after the Big Bang. It's still 10 to the 13 degrees. Um, for the first time, the quarks congeal into protons and neutrons. So before that, it was so hot that essentially the protons and neutrons that they existed would have melted. Okay. Here, they actually cool enough to begin to form protons. Time passes, and now we're at a whopping three minutes after the Big Bang. And those protons and neutrons begin to form nuclei of atoms. So you begin to see things like uh, deuterium nuclei, lithium and helium nuclei, things like that. Then quite some time passes. Now we're a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. And for the first time, protons and electrons combine to form complete atoms, hydrogen. And when that happens, it releases a whole bunch of radiation that before that was captured, and that radiation is still around us today. It's this thermal bath we live in. It's everywhere, it's just really hard to see, but we've studied it in great detail. It's very real. A billion years after the Big Bang, you begin to see giant clouds of gas that form in you know, galaxies, stars, planets, and all this stuff we know. And here we are, this is a little bit out of date. It says we're at 15 billion years now, but we're actually at 13.7. That's the age of the Well, this is kind of the same thing. All right. So let's look at that very beginning, that, that instance following the Big Bang after inflation, where all of these types of particles exist in what's known as the, the primordial soup. So we're a tiny, tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang, an enormous temperature. <laughs> all right. In one soup can of volume, okay, there's 50 times more mass than the entire Earth at this stage. It's that dense. Um, not to mention another 50 times the mass of the Earth in antimatter. So there's roughly equal amounts of matter in antimatter at this time. And with all this, there's one tiny extra matter particle. Why is that important? Why is it important that there's a little bit more matter than antimatter? 
Um, one, because they made the all matter and universe, and two, how can you make one without the other equal? Ah, okay. So, look around your world today. It's all matter, right? There's almost no antimatter. This table, that wall, that ceiling, my shoes, all matter, no antimatter. What happened is that there were a billion particles of antimatter and a billion plus one of matter in wow. the very beginning. I'll get in the very beginning, a very early universe, all those particles cooled, collided with each other, and destroyed each other, right? Except for that one bit of matter that was left behind. Okay? All those one, one bits of matter is what makes a world today. So that means there must be some asymmetry in the laws of nature that slightly, just slightly favor matter over antimatter. But we don't know exactly where that comes in, but we know there must be some sort of asymmetry and we're looking Maybe when the Big Bang happened, it blew two universes. All the matter went one way, and all the antimatter matter went the other way. Could be. Which Inflation would, could do that again. Which would explain why there's not a lot of antimatter in our universe. Well, but, you know, they were I made in almost equal quantities. quantities. Almost equal quantities, just slightly. Okay, so it's not just condensed, it's also extremely hot. So, in one of these cans, there's so much energy, it's about 10 billion years of total energy out of the sun in this amount of space. And it's made up of everything, every kind of elementary particle. So it's just over half of the particles in this soup are gluons, or quarks rather. Um, some gluons, electrons, Ws and Zs, neutrinos, photons, gravity. We don't know those are real, but that's what Ron put in this slide. It takes bosons, and then a lot of dark matter, although it's hard to know exactly how much. So let's apply, let's see how you can apply the scientific method to, to the cosmology. So we can't study the Big Bang itself, right? We don't have any tools to do that. We have to use what we can see. We have to use observation. Well, we know Edwin Hubble observed that space is expanding, right? It should, it should say that. Um, so Edwin Hubble has this observational tool to offer us. So we have at least this to confirm that that aspect of Einstein's um, theory is correct. We also have the light chemical abundances. Okay? So I said before, in, the, in about three minutes after the Big Bang, all of the hydrogen, deuterium, lithium, um, etc. that was formed, uh, was formed then. Basically, what we see in the universe today, in terms of these sorts of chemical elements, are what is predicted by the Big Bang. There's about 25% um, of, 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 of the mass of, of the atomic masses in, in helium, 75% in hydrogen, a little bit in other things. Exactly what's predicted by the theory. So again, we have a confirmation of the Big Bang picture um, from that measurement. And thirdly. <laughs> We have this background radiation that we see all over the sky. It's three degree Kelvin, almost almost zero degrees, three degrees, barely over half zero. That that we're bathed in. We've studied it in, in, in amazing detail, and you see this this sort of pattern over the sky. And that was produced about three hundred thousand years ago. Okay. So we have these and, and others, but these are three of the strongest indications we have the Big Bang hypothesis being valid. Um, it's never been shown to be, be faulty, and it's one of the more successful scientific theories of the 20th century. But there are limits, right? For example, none of these things tell us what happened before three minutes after the Big Bang, right? So this tells us that over the last few billion years, several billion years, it's been doing what we think it's been doing. This tells us that the, the, about three minutes after the Big Bang, stuff happened the way we thought it happened. And this tells us that a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang, things were happening like we thought would be happening. But we don't know what happened at one second after the Big Bang. We don't know what happened at 10 to the minus 23 seconds after the Big Bang. These are things that we have not tested. They're only part of the theory. We have no reason to think they're wrong, but we don't know they're 